हेलो गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द नोवल कांतापुरा रिटर्न बाय राजा राव इन लास्ट फ्यू वीडियोस वी हैव स्टडीड इट्स समरी एंड वी हैव कवर्ड इट्स सिक्स चैप्टर्स नाउ वी विल begin with chapter number 7th chapter number 7th and its title is the skeffington coffee estate the scene now shifts to the skeffington coffee estate it was a huge coffee plantation which stretched all over the hills and valleys around kanthapura it is difficult to give an idea of its vastness some said that it covered an area of more than 10000 acres its founder owner was an englishman who was known as the hunter sahib as he moved about with a hunter in hand now whipping this worker and now that to make them work faster the estate had an entrance from kanthapura at tipur stream by the time of the present story he was dead and his his place had been taken by his young nephew the coolies who worked on the estate were recruited from the plains below the ghats stretched up to the river godavari a foreman or a mestri as he was called was sent from time to time to recruit coolies according to need they were enticed to leave their hearth and home by false false promises entice entice means lalait karna to leave their hearth hearth means chula means unhe apna ghar chhodne ke liye lalait kiya jata tha chula aur ghar by false promises jhoote vaido se they were given 1 rupees each as advance and were promised a four ana bit for a man and two ana bit for a woman as daily wages they were also told that they would get plenty of white rice and that they would merely be recruited to pick coffee leaves they would not be put to any hard labor the foreman would speak to them politely he would smile on them the simple poverty stricken people were taken in by these false promises they come in large number with their belongings to work on the estate their march to Skeffington coffee estate has been described by Raja Rao at length in his usual graphic and picturesque style armies of coolies marched past the Kanchamma temple half nagged starving spitting weeping vomiting coughing swearing squeaking shouting mourning coolies coolies after coolies passed by the kanchamma temple the mestri before them while the children clung to their mothers breasts the old men to their sons arms and bundles hung over shoulders and arm and shoulders and head and they marched on past the kanchamma temple and up to skeffington 
coffee estate they first travel some distance by train and then march down a difficult path with their families to the estate coolies from below the ghats coolies young men old men old women children baskets bundles pots coolies passed on and winding through the twist of the estate path by the buxom buxom is thick people bend over the devil's raven breeze by the parvati well corner they marched up the mastery before them it is like the march of an army and the impression created is that of vast multitudes on the move raja rao's habitual use of an array of rhyming words starving spitting weeping vomiting etc is to be noted thus the coolies were brought to the coffee plantation some sorry once they were there the manners of the four men changed and he grew harsh and threatening they were exploited in many ways all promises all promises were forgotten no wages were given indeed the white owner did not even know that they had promised four annas bit for a man and two anna bit for a woman they were given small huts to live which they had to repair or thatch themselves they were provided with a frugal diet and were made to work hard from 5 in the morning till late in the in the night if anybody took rest or was slow he was severely whipped by the mastery who was ever on the watch no wages were paid and the old hands knew that who came to estate once never went out of it again he must work suffer and die there digging and cutting wood killing insects and rats were part of their labor the workers were also exploited sexually the white sahib was lecherous and corrupt he would have this or that woman who tickled his fancy if a woman refused him the husband's or father's wages were cut or he was given a whipping once a brahmin workman refused to send his daughter the sahib flew into such a rage that he shot the brahmin father dead with his pistol of course the sahib promised to pay about 2000 rupees as damages to the dead man's widow and children but eventually he paid nothing because the red man's court forgave him but every everyone knew that now the sahib will never touch a brahmin girl and even a pariha says no the foreman will very rarely be sent to drag her up in the middle of the night then the workers were also exposed to dangers and diseases of various kinds the estate was infested with snakes and many died of snake bites while at work on a long digression covering about 3 to 4 pages we were told a great deal about the nature of snakes about the different kind of snakes which frequented the estate there were deadly green snakes and there were also flying snakes such long digressions are entirely superflu- superfluous they in no way further the action and create the impression of formlessness indeed the this criticism has often been leveled against this novel 
Beside this, there were heavy rains, and the workers would have to work in rains, rains, rains drenched to their skin. With the rains, there would come malaria and takes a heavy toll of life. Men, women, and children died in large numbers. No doubt, the sahib would distribute pills among the coolies, but they were superstitious. and many would not take the pills they also suffered from cough dysentery and vomiting many would have liked to go back to their homes but they had no money and anybody who dared ask for his wages was mercilessly beaten in salt the coolies were a miserable lot and had to suffer terrible hardship we have already noted that bade khan was staying at the estate bade khan who was a policeman and his arrival had further strengthened and encouraged the sahib now an officer of the law was also with him the majority of the coolies were parihas but there were also a few brahmins who could not be suppressed so easily among them were two young brahmins clerk gangadhar and vasudev of progressive and enlightened views they took the parihas to kantapura to take part in the gandhi bhajan it were they who invited murthi to come to the estate to teach the ignorant coolies they said writes the novelist the parihas must learn to read and to write and when can and when can they do this they can speak straight to the sahib and ask for this and that money and material for and many holidays why should not pariha rachanna and sampanna learn to read and to write they sell and bade khan can wave his beard and twist his mustache what a policeman before a gandhi man what is a policeman before a gandhi man tell me does a bore bore means sewer pig stand before a lion or a jackal before an elephant raja rao's use of graphic smiles and metaphors is to be noted on evening when murthy is to come to skeffington coffee estate to teach the parihas they all wait eagerly for him at the gates of the estate it is dark but a light is seen moving up at a distance but a khan is also seen prowling about with a lathi in hand a tense atmosphere thick with suspense and forbidding is skillfully built up by the novelist by noticing the movement of the light and movements and whispering of bade khan it is done so skillfully that we see the entire incident with our mind's eye at last murthy does come up but he is stopped at the gates of uh, the estate by bade khan he tells murthy you cannot enter the gates of estate i am a free man police sahib answered murthy free man you may be in your place palace but this is the skeffington coffee estate and these are skeffington coffee estate coolies you had better take care of your legs i have orders coolies are men police sahib and according to the law of your government and that of mr skeffington no man can own another i have every right to go in you will not cross the gate i sell by now vasudev and uh, vasudev and gangadhar come and others the four men and his supporter had also come there was so much swearing and cursing and hurling of abusing of abuses a fierce fight follows 
देयर वॉज वीपिंग एंड पुलिंग ऑफ हेयर एंड बियर्ड्स द वूमन फेल अपॉन द फोर मैन एंड बडे खान एंड वुड हैव टॉन दैम टू स्रेड्स हैड नॉट मोर थी साउटेड नो बीटिंग सिस्टर्स नो बीटिंग इन द नेम ऑफ द महात्मा वेयर अपॉन द फोर मैन गोट अप एंड स्टार्टेड वीपिंग द कूलीस अप बाई द एस्टेट पर्थ while vasudev led murthy down to kanthapura for the night the following morning the four men threw rachanna and his wife with their two orphaned grandchildren out of the hut at skeffington estate there were they there were given shelter by patel range gowda and uh, that was how they came to live in kanthapura it was after the after this that murthy began his don't touch the government campaign this was the summary of the chapter number 7th in next video we will meet with the chapter number 8 till then goodbye thank you